today we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, when God's Spirit has been poured out upon the earth, filling every nook and crevice of this cosmos. We wear red because it symbolizes the fire, the purifying fire of God's presence. A few announcements before we begin worship today. There is a new directory. Many of you may know about that. If you didn't pick one up, it's out in the entryway. We have a special baptism scheduled next Sunday. There'll be a service of the Word and Holy Baptism at 4 p.m. It's open to anybody, so I invite you to come. We scheduled it at that time because many of the family members are coming from Ohio and Iowa and the flights don't arrive until after our morning service. So we're doing that to accommodate the family, but please know you are all invited if you would like to come. And then finally, I've sent out an email and posted announcements. I really would like to meet with as many of you as possible. I already met Judy and Van and had a nice visit with them. I'd like to hear your story, learn about your journey, what your concerns are, and what your hopes are for the future. We can meet somewhere in the community, we can meet at the church, wherever you're most comfortable. I have been fully vaccinated, but I will wear a mask uh, if, if you're more comfortable with that. I think that should do it. So we'll begin this Feast of Pentecost with Thanksgiving for Baptism. So please rise as you are comfortable. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Joined to Christ in the waters of holy baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Please be seated. Thank you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And God also with you. Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, 
And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one was heard them, each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read the psalm responsibly. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. God is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships, and Leviathan that you form to sport it. These are to you, to give them their food in due season. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you hide your face, they are the same. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Please rise for the gospel. send to you from the Father. The Spirit of truth who comes from the Father will testify on my behalf. You, are all, you also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to the one who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. 
For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send the Advocate to you. And when the Advocate comes, the Advocate will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, the spirit will guide you into all truth. For the spirit will not speak on its own, but will speak whatever the spirit hears. And the spirit will declare to you the things that are to come. The spirit will glorify me, because the Spirit will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that the Father will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Today, many of us are wearing red or shades of red to celebrate Pentecost. Historically speaking, Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that occurred 50 days after Passover. It was a time when Jews from all over the region gave thanks to God for the first fruits of the harvest. In the time that Jesus lived, the focus of the festival pivoted and celebrated the covenant that God made with God's people and the giving of the law to Moses at Sinai. In both instances, Pentecost was a time of communal gathering, celebration, and thanksgiving. Jews far and wide returned to Jerusalem to celebrate Pentecost. Today, many congregations will most likely sing the hymn, Spirit of Gentleness. Do you know that song? Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. It almost sounds like a John Denver tune, doesn't it? It's easy, and we want to sway to the music. It almost will lull you to sleep. But in my opinion, the Spirit is anything but gentle. Why, then, do we work so hard to try to box in, tame, or domesticate God's spirit? When we look back at the outpouring of the spirit on Pentecost, it was a time when the disciples were afraid. Jesus had promised to send them the advocate, the paraclete, the comforter, but by this time, Jesus had already ascended to the Father, and the disciples were left alone, most likely afraid, dispirited, and grieving, grieving the loss of Jesus. And perhaps a little bit of doubt set in, too. Fear, anxiety, and worry began to take hold of the disciples. Distressed and discouraged, the disciples struggled not to surrender to the feelings of abandonment and loss. Perhaps many of you in this room can relate to these feelings too. Especially given everything that the people of Salem have gone through these last 18 months. It's only natural to experience feelings of grief and loss and maybe a little bit of doubt sprinkled in, too. Emotions that turn our gaze to what has been, instead of to the future that God is calling us into together. So notice in this text from Acts 2, Notice how the Holy Spirit descends upon the community of believers just as Jesus has promised. And it's anything but gentle. 
First, as a sound, violent as a storm, when suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind that filled the entire house. Then, as tongues of fire descend and rest upon the disciples, all are astonished, and believers are stirred from their apathy as they are filled with the Holy Spirit to overflowing. This language is violent, it's active, it implies being overwhelmed, being immersed in God's spirit. It's language of abundance. And then being overflowed, then being filled with the spirit of God, notice how the entire community that has been gathered bears witness and testifies to God's mighty acts of power. One of my favorite theologians, he's a Lutheran pastor living in the Twin Cities of Minneapolis, writes, the Holy Spirit is as much an agitator as an advocate, as much a provocateur as a comforter. I think Pastor David Lowe's is right. The Holy Spirit is at work stirring things up. The Holy Spirit is at work pushing us to the places we might fear to go moving us into the future that God is calling us into, leading us onto new and unexpected paths that we could never imagine or anticipate, shaping and recreating our shared ministries in this place. So again, I ask the question, why do we try so hard to discount, overlook, or ignore the activity of God's Spirit in our midst. One of the interesting facts of this text today from Acts 2 is the reality that the Spirit manifests itself in a shared understanding. The Spirit manifests itself in a shared understanding that binds the community together together as one. And the message that is heard on Pentecost proclaims God's mighty deeds of power. But notice, even then, even in that moment, there are some in the crowd who ask, what does this mean? The doubters and the ones who think they have all the answers see only drunkenness. They declare that these Galileans are filled with new wine. But did you notice how Peter responds? Peter, standing with the eleven, responds by preaching. Peter responds with proclamation, quoting the prophet Joel, testifying that God's spirit was being poured out upon the believers and a community of prophets was being formed when distinctions, young and old, male and female, slave and free, when distinctions are shattered. When the renewed, transformed, and empowered, spirit-filled community is gathered together by God's spirit in prophecies, visions, and dreams. It's a remarkable scene remarkable event. And yet it's important for us, the faithful gathered here and now, to remember that Pentecost is not a one and done event. For God's Spirit is loose upon the earth. God's Spirit is filling every nook and cranny of this cosmos. And nothing you nor I can do can change it, stop it, or prevent it. The Holy Spirit refuses to be boxed in, tamed, or ignored. And the beauty for us, when we gathered and we gave thanks for holy baptism, we remember that the Holy Spirit comes to us too, filling us, overflowing in us, 
creating a wellspring in us with gifts, equipping us for the work of ministry. Why then do we not live into the gifts we have been given by God's Spirit? Peter, in his proclamation, declares, the Spirit is received by all who are repent and are baptized. While we might like to confine church to a one-hour gathering each week in a sanctuary, or while we might try to downplay the gifts of the Spirit that we have all received, the fact of the matter is that God has other plans. The agitating and transforming power of the Holy Spirit repeatedly drives us out of our comfort zones, drives us out of our worship spaces, drives us out into the world. God's Spirit leads us forth into new opportunities we could never imagine. God's Spirit calls forth gifts from all of us. And God's Spirit helps us to envision together new and exciting ministry opportunities that await. On Pentecost, we celebrate that God's Spirit is loose in the world. On Pentecost, we celebrate that God's Spirit is strengthening us in faith through the means of grace. God's Word proclaimed the sacrament of Holy Communion and Holy Baptism. We celebrate that God's Spirit is at work through the power of our baptisms, equipping us with gifts for ministry. God's Spirit is at work in our lives, sending us, sending us out to proclaim God's mighty deeds of power, to live generously and joyfully, and to explore together what it means to be the church in the wake of a global pandemic and the sale of a cherished church building. Come, Holy Spirit, come.
church on earth, let us declare our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dying, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious God, you give us the Holy Spirit to your church, filling it with many and varied gifts. In the church throughout the world, strengthen us in our visioning and dreaming, that it may, that it may discover anew the Spirit's creative work. Lord, in your mercy. God of the nations, at the sound of the rushing wind, people speaking different languages proclaimed and heard together your deeds of power. Fill the leaders of nations with your Holy Spirit so that they exercise your gracious will in the lives of people. Lord, in your mercy. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people even the size of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore to wholeness all who are in any need this day, especially Vicki and Marty, and the family and friends of Kathy Horner. Lord, in your mercy. God of love, fill the mission partners in this congregation with gratitude for the gifts we have received from you. Renew our ministries, heal our divisions, and open us to the needs of our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please give a greeting to your neighbor as we prepare the table during this time. Before we pray the offering prayer, just uh, another reminder that we do not pass the collection plate at this time. The offering plate is located on the table as you enter the sanctuary. Again, a deep, heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you who continues to support the mission and ministries we share. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our praise and praise. Is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and opened to us the way to everlasting life. And so with the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, when supper had ended, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We commune coming up the center aisle by family group. I encourage you to please take your time. If you would like to commune side by side, that's fine. Do that and I will commune you. you have, we have gluten-free hosts that are available as well. There's wine and juice. Uh, then you take your cup and you place your cup in the baskets on either side. Come to the Lord's table, for now all is ready. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Thank mm -hmm.
please rise for the table blessing and prayer after communion. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Now for our prayer. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us forth as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all your people. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now for our sending blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ. May the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.